Good morning, everybody. April 10th, 2023. Troy Hall here with you in Cornish, New Hampshire. Uh, we're right at the foot of Mount Escutney, and we are beginning, or not beginning, but we are uh, this today and for the next few days, we're going to unpack nucleus colonies. But I wanted to show you guys how I, uh, what things look like here in early spring as we unpack bees from the winter. They've come through the whole duration of winter on these uh, pallets here. As, uh, you guys can see I, I, in previous videos, we, we've kind of demonstrated how we pack these bees, but these are, these are uh, nucleus colonies. They all overwinter in 10 frame uh, single deep boxes. Some of them are in, they're still, when I make up these nucleus colonies, there's, there can be two nucleus colonies in a 10 frame box, but then as they, as they expand, I will gradually move them out of, you know, a two frame, two colonies in a box to each colony getting a 10 frame. Uh, super by itself with a feeder and you guys will see that today. Most of these are going to be established in their own deep super. They're going to be eight combs in a feeder. There'll probably be a handful that'll have still that double nuke configuration and that's the way that I make them up. But regardless, we'll unpack them today. We'll see how they look. Um, for those that have, you know, for people who are uh, tuning in, have no idea what I'm up to. Um, essentially, I, I have an ape, my apiary is set up around three primary kind of management schemes around honey production, nucleus colonies, and mating nucleus colonies for queen, you know, mating and breeding queen bees. This particular section of my apiary, I have five locations like this, where all these yards, all these five yards are um, full of nucleus colonies and they're managed accordingly. So um, this particular location, just as I had mentioned, is full of all nucleus colonies. And then there's other locations throughout the Upper Valley region here where they're all honey production colonies. So they're going to be in my typical honey production ma uh, management scheme is usually, uh, not usually, but it's two deep supers um, going through the winter. So those are all kind of configured in the yard a little differently. Where these bees are on pallets and there's four to a pallet. And uh, it's funny, ideally you want to find bee locations or bee yards that are easily accessible, right? and uh, good uh, orientation to, uh, to, you know, from the elements and good exposure to the southeast for up here in the north anyways for sun. But this particular yard has been nicknamed the Bee Bog uh, by a few of my helpers. It's got uh, a lot of runoff coming off the hillside here. So this, the ground is very saturated and uh, gets pretty muddy. Um, as you can see, some of the pallets are starting to, the, the cinder blocks sink into the ground. Um, some years it gets pretty bad here. Some years it's not too bad. This is probably a in the middle somewhere. It's not too bad, but it's, it's a little wet in the next couple days throughout the, throughout the week, it'll dry out. But here we are nonetheless getting the job done. This is a great yard. The bees winter here, you know, besides being wet, a little wet in the spring, it's a great, great uh, location where they just seem to thrive and uh, winter, you know, they winter beautifully here. So uh, let's, let's keep on moving forward here. We'll start to unpack these bees. So I strap all the bees down to the pallets with two pieces of baling twine. Ideally, I've been using the plastic orange twine. Uh, this is just the treated uh, twine, baling twine. It works, it's pretty good for like one season's worth of use. And I like the orange stuff better. I can get like three or four years out of it. And if you take care of stuff, that's my ideology when it comes to working bees or bees in general is if I can maximize on all the resources and all the equipment and everything I use, I mean, right down to this baling twine, I won't use this again, because obviously after a season's worth of use, it just starts to fray and rip. But the orange stuff, you know, if you're tying, if you tie your lids on with it, um, it, it lasts, I have some of it, I think it's gotta be three or four years old. And I love to be able to kind of, you know, use stuff like that um, again and again, because then you don't have to cut this to length and tie knots in it. It's all ready to go. I mean, the trick is my mentality is if I can take care of stuff today for the sake of tomorrow, when it comes to use, um, then it's just less work for me to prepare, you know, equipment or, you know, little, little items like this that help uh, keep my apiary together when it comes to management, you know, for the sake of tying stuff down, I can just take old uh, reused, twine and recycle it back in and it's ready to go for next season. So I'm trying to obviously just keep it all nice and organized, neat together. I'm just trying to show you guys if this was stuff I was going to reuse, I'd kind of keep it all, you know, tied up like this. And then uh, I will uh, kind of bundle it together and then store it away. And then next fall, it's right there ready for me to use again. Today is a day where it's just me and Fred. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have a couple helpers, but 
they're all on vacation. So it's just me. Um, it, it's funny, I haven't really been working alone a lot the last few years. I've had a lot of people wanting to help, and I've had uh, one helper who's been here pretty religiously, regularly, I should say, um, who uh, I've been blessed to be able to work with. But now that it's just me, it reminds me of kind of working by myself in the early days of building up my apiary where it was just me all the time. So um, good help is hard to find nowadays, that is a fact. Here's some of the orange twine right here. As you can see, this stuff is, this is probably four, three or four years old, and it just keeps going. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna tie this stuff up. I got one more pallet over here. I'll take all the green stuff and keep it together. Feels like we're walking in a pig, pig sty here. So wrap it all up. This makes it nice to throw away when it's all organized. And I just kind of pile them up here. And these orange ones I'll keep separate. Maybe I can get another year's worth of use out of them. I always got people who are helping me like, oh, you know, those covers are looking a little, a little soft or, you know, they're starting to rot. It's like, yeah, it's got another year. You can get another year out of it. Or some bottom boards that are starting to fall apart. Most people would just toss them. It's like, well, they're not completely falling apart. You can get another year out of it. And every year, another year you can get out of it until literally the things are rotting right off <laughs> into the ground or something. Then that's the time when you start to replace your equipment. So that's my, that's kind of the way I find myself doing things. Not that I have, you know, really bad equipment, but there's some, I'm starting to see some bottom boards and some equipment over the years here in the last two or three years that are starting to show signs of needing to be phased out because it's over 10 years or 12, 13 years old now. Um, time flies when you're having fun. Somebody tied this one on the other side. I always blame it on the help, especially when they're not here. <laughs> you always blame it on the guy that, that's not here. <laughs> I will say this, I like, I like when it comes to like, a, you know, attire, I, I'm not one to wear a bee suit. I just don't, I don't really have bees. I say that with humility, right? This might be the year my bees just get overly aggressive and I find myself you know, making the purchase for a, a ventilated bee suit. But um, my, my, my thought is that I, I really appreciate coveralls because it keeps my clothes clean. And I know that's why a lot of guys wear suits is because it keeps your clothes clean. But especially this time of year, um, I don't really wear the white ones. I like the black, the darker colors because they're up here anyways in the sunlight, it keeps you warmer. But um, I found that coveralls this time of year, a nice item to have in the bee yard. That's it. They're all, those are untied. We'll wrap them up. If I can do it right here. Get a few ties in there. There. Now we begin the next stage of this process and that's where we take the covers off the, the lids here. If it's windy, I usually do this couple pallets at a time because you don't want the wind to blow the blue board, which is underneath this. There's two pieces to the covers here on these packs, uh, this, this, this style of, uh, of the way that I pack these nucleus colonies. There's a big piece of tar paper and a little piece. And this is 30W weight or 30 weight tar paper. The tar paper that I use to wrap the, the four uh, boxes together are just 15 weight. So I use the thicker stuff on top. I forget the dimensions and the length and all that stuff, but I just essentially, it's like when you're roofing anything, the seam of this tar paper is gonna be wherever you're, if you're on a hill or if you know kind of where, how things are pitched, you want the smaller piece of tar paper at the bottom of that pitch because obviously water will flow. If you imagine, if, you're, if you guys are familiar with roofing, you don't wanna 
you know, have your shingles in an orientation where water goes up under them, you want them to flow over the seam, not up into the seam. So I'm gonna make a pile to keep everything organized, lay out two, two stacks here. This will be for the, for the roofs. What I'll do is kind of go through a few of these at a time. My, I'm at the point, I'm 37 years old, and I just started having sciatic pain. <laughs> so, um, like most beekeepers, our backs are the things that are the most used and abused. And I'm at the point now in my career where I'm starting to think of how can I mechanize and start to work smarter and not so much harder on my back. So obviously things like the easy lift and, or the easy loader and all that stuff are great, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm looking at stuff like that, but uh, my, my thought of, of doing all this is if I can stop from bending over all the time, keep stuff elevated. I make, I have some benches that I use. They're not here with me today, but uh, when I'm doing management, uh, when I'm just performing different tasks uh, and then around the apiary, especially when I'm reversing the colonies in the spring, I have a bench that I use to keep everything up here, as opposed to down here. Um, I used to just kind of do the typical, throw the bottom, you know, the outer cover on the ground, put the super on, and just thousands and hundreds of times, you know, throughout the season, just constantly bending over and not being mindful of my body mechanics, you know, bending your knees and not using your back, not twisting and bending. So anyways, I'm at that point where I feel like my body's telling me if I'm gonna be doing this for any length of time going forward, I need to start paying attention to these things. And my mind, it's amazing seeing guys that are really smart about this, how they, you know, invest early in their operations to get things established where they don't have to push their bodies to the point where they're, you know, starting to pay for the repercussions of abusing their backs or their bodies too much.